How do companies create a culture and core values that employees actually live out? The team at The Receptionist, a bootstrapped Denver-based software company, sets out to answer that very question. Welcome to The Fabric Podcast. Here's your host, Michael Ashford. In this episode of The Fabric Podcast, I sit down and chat with Aman Tewolde. Aman is one of the first winners of our inaugural Fabric Scholarship that we started here in 2020 here at The Receptionist. If you remember from previous episodes of The Fabric Podcast, our just cause as a company is to build a world where a company's profits fuel the mission to be in service to its employees and its community. And starting a scholarship, an annual scholarship, is one of the ways that we aim to pour into our community here at The Receptionist. And Aman, we get to hear his story. This scholarship that we have started here at The Receptionist, we want to give it to students who exemplify fabric, the core values of the company here at The Receptionist. Fun, authentic, bold, respectful, innovative, and collaborative. And as you'll hear from my conversation with Aman, he is a perfect example. And you'll see very clearly why we chose Aman as one of the inaugural winners of the scholarship here at The Receptionist. So this is a great conversation. Aman's going places. You'll hear all about his path and his journey in this episode, and I can't wait to share it with you. So without further ado, let's jump into the conversation with Aman. You just wrapped up what I believe is your final semester of undergraduate. Is that is that correct? Yep. Wrapped it up. I uh, graduated on set this past Saturday with my uh, computer science degree and a minor in photography. How does it feel to, to be wrapped up with an undergrad? I know you're going into your master's, so you still got school left in you, but <laughs> how, how does that feel? It, it feels nice. It feels a little bit surreal. It hasn't hit me just yet that I'm, I'm fully complete. Um, it was a long road getting to this point, um, but actually sitting uh, with all the other graduates, all waiting for our names to get called, it was, it was, it was really nice. It was fun to hear. I definitely want to get into the computer science and the photography. That seems, you know, an interesting uh, duality there, but you and I, Amon, actually have something in common and I want to get into this. My first, after my first semester, when I was in civil engineering at Kansas State University, I got put on academic probation. Uh, cause, yeah. uh, and, and I want to get into <laughs> not why you were on academic probation, but just some of the things that perhaps you and I both shared in our experience going into college and how difficult that can be. What yeah. was it like for you? Absolutely. I think, so when I first came in, um, I didn't actually start as computer science or started as uh, electrical engineering. And, um, that first semester was just super rough. I'm trying to discover like, what do I actually want to learn? What do I actually want to go through? And ended with a uh, 1.8 that left that first semester and was put on a media on academic probation. And just to me, that feeling of like, man, I'm already starting off with just, just a broken leg going into this. Am I even going to be able to complete this fully? That, that was scary to start with. You know, that like, it felt like I was the fit, the, uh, Race just started and I was already behind. I know for me, when I was put on academic probation, <laughs> um, I, I re- came to this realization, like I came to college thinking I had an idea of what I wanted to do and it was not at all the case. Was it similar for you? Yeah, very similar. Um, coming to college, I knew I wanted to do something with electronics or computers, but right when I got there, I was like, I don't think this is it. This is not what I want to do. I can't see myself putting passion into this. And I think quite honestly, the GPA kind of reflected that on. (laughs) (laughs) uh, Like I said, I've been there. It's not fun, right? (laughs) Um, Not at all. Your letter to us after receiving the fabric scholarship, uh, I want to read you something from it and then, and just kind of get your reflection on it. Uh, You said, what receiving the fabric scholarship means to me is that even at the very low points at times, there is always an opportunity to learn and grow. It means learning from mistakes and using the knowledge from those mistakes to achieve great accomplishments while cherishing the process it took to be proud. Aman, that's fantastic. Where did that mindset come from? I love that, man. I think it really came from what I always say. And um, it's, it's a funny saying that a lot of people kind of question, but I think it has a lot of value into it is getting good at failing. And I think a lot of people they hear failing and they get really scared about it. They don't want to do it. They always think you have to keep trying, but 
to me, failing is an opportunity to see, all right, cool. That is one way I don't need to, I know now not to go do. Now I found one of the many ways not to do something. I think you should take the failure and just keep pushing towards what you are trying to achieve. And that's the biggest thing that I think anyone can learn from failing or trying over and over and over again. It doesn't, it's not a sign to give up then it's a, all right, cool. I found one of those things just not to do it well, but we can keep going with it. Let's, let's figure out what can actually work here. You learn something each time you do something. Where does your head go in the moments where you're actively experiencing failure? Let's say you just found out you're on academic probation with a 1.8 GPA, or in my case, I think it was a 1.9 GPA. <laughs> We're close. What do you do in those moments to think like, okay, I'm failing at this, but there's something, you know, this could mean something. Where does your headspace go? My headspace goes immediately to thinking, all right, what can I do right now and in the future to change my trajectory on something? How do I change this into an upwards trajectory? Even the small days where maybe I'm still going through the bumps of having to meet with advisors to get get all that academic probation and everything. How do I keep making sure I'm going up on that upward trajectory of bettering myself on and everything? It hurts emotionally, definitely, but it's just getting into the mindset of not looking in the past and dwelling on, ah, oh, well, maybe I could have done this, this, this. Definitely keep in mind of those, those changes you could have made, but apply those to the actual future that you have control over changing. I think that's the biggest thing to, to glean from it. So what did you do? How did you come out of this, this ditch? And, mm. and what were your steps in that process? The thing I did was take all the, the advice I got from everyone of just like what I should do of, all right, go study this, 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 but to me, that was kind of just generic advice to give someone. The biggest thing I did was switch to something I knew I enjoyed, which computer science was something I did enjoy. While even while doing it, there were still some aspects. I was like, okay, maybe maybe this. But the biggest thing that really helped me was getting real world experiences and understanding and applying what I was learning. So my biggest thing for me was uh, getting a technical assistant IT job at the college um, a couple of years in, and that just skyrocketed my my passion to actually learn what I was doing because I actually got to apply it into the real field and understand like, oh, wow, this is this is what we're doing and learning. This is how it's working in the real world right now. And this is what's actually happening. And so I honestly think if you can find something that you truly enjoy that actually makes you happy and then can go out and apply it and have fun with it, you're going to you're just going to forget that you're actually sitting down and learning about whatever class it is or whatever homework assignment you're doing, you're going to have fun with it and actually go, Oh, I'm going to see this everywhere else. That's going to, now you're going to notice patterns like that. And that's what I started doing computer science. I love that you use fun because fun is the F in fabric of our four (laughs) values here at the reception. So that's perfect. I did not set you up for that. (laughs) I want to go back to something you said though. What advice wasn't helpful during that time? You kind of said some of it was just kind of generalities that that you kind of brush aside, but did you get any advice that wasn't helpful? Yeah, just the 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 generic advice, which I, it is needs to be said of study harder, you know, like you should go to <laughs> class and do this. And it was like I I had a perfect attendance record throughout high school and here. I don't think it's me showing up to class and trying to study for this that's that's coming to my issue. Um it's it was the it's it was the generic, you know, like you try a little bit harder, you can get through it. And I think everyone always hears that, like try harder and it can do it. But if you're if something's breaking down constantly, you know, there needs to be some changes that's going on. That that drive to get that job, I believe you said there yeah. at the university. How difficult was that? So it wasn't super difficult because we have at the university we have a handshake, which is an internal uh, job hiring process. Um, but I think the process to what pushed me to get that job was a little different. So previously I worked at a um, different employer where um, I was excelling in it, but it wasn't a place that was actually going to push me further into what I actually wanted to do. And um, I kind of quit on a pretty fast basis after uh, the management had, uh, we had some disagreement on where I was being placed. I was being taken out of my actual position of where I was supposed to be in electronics, learning what I was doing. And was told, this is your end all be all basically either like it or leave. And that's where I was like, and I'm choosing to leave. And so (laughs) right then and there, I actually left and just started searching for jobs. And when I found my technical assistant position at CU Denver, quite honestly, beginning, I was like, I think this is just a lab position to help me at least focus on what I'm doing and I can keep moving. But little did I know it was the biggest opportunity and most grateful opportunity I had uh, of entering something I really like of IT and learning because they really pushed forward on 
like working with me with my classes of the manager would look at my school schedule and go, cool, let's work with you on figuring out times that you can actually work here, but actually have time to study. We're not going to make you go straight from here to class, here from class. Let's give you mm. breathing room to actually leave. And so it was super helpful. That's fantastic. It's always, it's so wonderful to have a, have a supportive manager and yeah. somebody who, for lack of a better phrase, gets it right. Yeah. Uh, just, just understands everything that you are the sum of everything that's going on in your life, not just who you are at work. Yes. Before we come back to that photography, yes. where does this play a role? <laughs> how, how did you get into it? Is this, is this a lifelong love or where did photography come from? So in high school, uh, like my senior year of high school, I picked up a camera in one of our uh, classes that we had and just kind of liked it. I kind of enjoyed uh, the art feeling of it. I was never good at like drawing or painting, but it was really fun being able to take pictures. And so getting into uh, CU Denver, I didn't even start with the minor actually. So we didn't have the uh, BA to actually have a minor, but once that became available and I could decide on a minor and it was suggested like you can do math or statistics or I was, but I was like, I, I want photography. And I think the biggest reason I chose that was to step away from something that is all just career and pushing my uh, learning and everything in towards of math and science, but actually having a creative outlet that, that can help me with my actual career. So I always say with photography, the biggest thing I learned was there's always a different view to look at things. There, there's always a different angle you can look at things. If something's not working in whatever you're doing, you probably, maybe there's another way to look at it. And just in different classes and everything we've learned of not everything's going always going to work out the way you want it to. It's the skill of being able to work with what happened. That's fantastic. What, what do you have something that you like to take photos of the most is it landscape people, anything like that? I really like people. People photography is really fun, especially if it's a uh, portraits or a uh, senior, senior photos or anything. Uh, so when I was graduating and needed senior photos, it was just a lot of, <laughs> It was super expensive to do. So for a bit there, I was doing a, like a little crusade of just giving people free senior photos because it just made people happy. It just made people excited to actually have photos of themselves. Does it, do you find that it transfers into your work in any way? Uh, are there, are there things that feed off each other or, or lessons you can learn from photography that you pull into your work in IT? Oh yeah, absolutely. Um, a big part of that is the people aspect of just being able to communicate and talk to different people and learn uh, where problems are stemming from and just being able to have that back and forth communication. Mm -hmm. um, IT is really the just the field of, well, computers, but yes, but also communicating and helping trying to push people forward. So with photography, what I learned is some people are shy. Some people don't like getting their photos taken necessarily, and they'll be a little timid and things, and you just have to ease them in, be at the very fundamental core of it, be a good person to them and talk to them like a normal human, human being. And I've really gleaned from that, yeah, social communication aspect from it. And yeah. also just learning how to even, um, uh, what I mentioned previously of taking photos at just one angle, like constantly, yes, that might work, but that doesn't mean every other angle around you isn't going to work. So constantly when I'm scripting, programming, or, or trying to set up a complex system, if something's not working through the manual, I'm just going to leave the manual and try to figure out on my own and see, all right, if this works, then it works. I'm going to document it. <laughs> just that, uh, you know, new ideas, right? Yeah. I, I think it's kind of, if I were to sum up what you just said, just new ideas that can be applicable in, in areas that you wouldn't think make Absolutely. a whole lot of sense to, to have that cross-pollination there. So, Aman, what does it feel like to be in your in your rhythm, in the, the career path and in the job and in the, the major that makes sense for you and that you feel connected to? What does that mean to you? What it means to me is that I'm super excited to keep pushing forward and I don't see the end coming super soon. And that's a good thing to me of when I was back in the 1.8 GPA, the end, I could see the, the, the end right, th the potential end right there of like, mm -hmm. I can just give up right now. I can just yeah. stop and figure out something else what like don't need it but right now in my current position with everything that's going on graduating new job and everything masters the, that end is kind of blurred and i like that it's it's super far away and i can keep pushing forward and i can decide when i want to finish up and i can decide when 
things are fully done for myself. How much uh, school do you have on the horizon for yourself? And, and how long is a master's in IT? <laughs> so for IT, usually it's uh, about two years. And depending on how I go about it, uh, it could be end up being two to three if I work alongside with it, just because uh, the position I did get was is with uh, CU Boulder. Yeah. So they'll be paying for that master's and I'll be able to, to go through uh, one by one. Depending on how the master's go, there's inkling in my mind of like, hmm, maybe a PhD is in the far, far horizon. We'll see. Would you want to teach with a PhD? What, what uh, would, would lead you down that path? I don't know if I would want to teach with a PhD necessarily. I do like teaching uh, different classes and courses just because when I was um, growing up, I was a part of the uh, Cyber Patriot, which was a um, small club that was a big, big stepping stone for me in learning cybersecurity and just the cyber field in general and what really got me interested in, in learning more. And the person who taught us didn't have a PhD. They were just a volunteer that just really liked teaching kids. And mm. um, I reached out to him actually a little a couple of weeks ago and just told him like, Hey, thank you. That uh, I don't know if, if you realize how much of an impact that had on me for a bit was kept coming back. Like, I, I really like doing all the stuff we did there learning how everything worked. Love that. I'm on fight. What prompted you to reach out to that person from your past to share a little bit of good grace with them? It was, Mainly because it's just, I want them to know that they're having an effect on people. I think when we think day to day and what we're doing, especially uh, teachers and professors and everything, it's easy to get lost in the just day to day mundane of just like teaching one class, keep going, teaching one class, keep going. And I don't get, don't believe they get to see their, their work progress years down the road and what they had effects on. Um, Because I think honestly, teaching in, in general has effects far down from just when the semester ends or when class ends. Yeah. Um, it affects you lifetime. So you wondered. did some mentoring and, and leading of, of youth as well. Do I have that correct? Yeah. I was in the mentor collective. Yeah. How did you get connected with that? What, what spurred that decision on? Yeah. So um, it was actually my first academic advisor when um, I was going through getting out of academic probation. Uh, she was actually watching me become better and do better and try and learning more and getting there that she was she just suggested that hey we do have this mentoring program i don't know if you're interested in getting into this but your story might help other people learn from getting into college and what to expect and how to recover or keep pushing forward and that was an app a great opportunity that i took of like yeah i would have i would have loved to have someone like that like an ear to talk to of like hey I kind of just messed up here. How do I, how do, where do I move from here? How do I keep going? How do I get a real perspective on things? And so when I had that opportunity pop up, I absolutely took it and got to mentor a lot of kids. And as I understand it, undergrads as well, like first year students. Yeah. Yes. I shouldn't call them kids undergrads. My bad. <laughs> <laughs> what anybody listening to this, whether it's a parent who has a kid going into college or, or, you know, somebody who's, who's looking ahead towards college, you've been in that situation where, like you said, you saw the end or the potential mm-hmm. end very near. What's, what was your advice to those undergrads or, or to kids getting ready to make the leap into college about setting yourself up for success? What did you tell them? First thing is calm down. It's not the end of the world. <laughs> you can still work from here. The academic probation doesn't mean, hey, you're getting kicked out, you're gone, you're gone. It's a snap of like, hey, let's, let's change things up. Some things need to change for you. And Quite honestly, it's it's for the person to actually do it and to make the changes, but it's not it's nothing bad. It's just a little reminder of, hey, let's let's see if some other options are good for you while still in school. How do we switch things up? And uh, honestly, the biggest advice I have is reflecting on if you're taking too much workload, too, because some people will try to do as much as they can and their all their working abilities just sparse out everywhere where it's just from go, 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 go. There's only 24 hours in a day. If you, if you really need to laser in and focus on in on a couple of classes, like 12 credits, which is the minimum you can take, do just that. If that's what makes you push forward and have that, like I said before, the upward trajectory, even if there's small dips, all you care about is just the overall upward trajectory. Doing a little bit better each day, it adds up so much to the fact that in two years, three years, you're going to be in a completely different position. And you're going to look back and laugh a little bit of like, huh, that was funny. That was nice. It is nice. Uh, Speaking from experience myself, Mm -hmm. and I know you've got it too. 
uh, it is nice when you can look back on it and say that thing didn't, didn't kill me. Yep. <laughs> um, academic yep. probation was a spark rather than the end. <laughs> yep. Right. Um, Amon, you were one of two of our inaugural scholarship winners for the fabric scholarship. As we begin to wrap things up, I'd love to hear from you. Just what did that scholarship mean to you going into your final semester as an undergrad? It meant a lot to me in, in that the people who put my name forward for the scholarship, who, who recommended me for it, they actually believed in me. They, they saw my work. They, they didn't focus in on my trouble in my first semester. They, they, didn't, they didn't see that as the negative they saw that as the positive of like look where you came from you you started at quite literally the bottom where you can get to and forced yourself up you pushed yourself up you kept going and to me it was really to get the scholarship reflected on all the hard work I was doing and pushing forward and trying to better myself each day and quite honestly it helped me just get through the last semester because I was going to have to pick up some more more work to help pay for it and to get through the the end goal of just trying to get Get out of college and um, not have my parents like help pay for everything and just give back to them. Like, Hey guys, I finally got a scholarship that we're aiming for. <laughs> That's fantastic. Lamont, as we wrap things up here, uh, I like to ask our guests now of our core values here at the receptionist that spell out fabric, fun, authentic, bold, respectful, innovative, and collaborative. What's your favorite of those? What means the most to you perhaps said another way? Well, honestly, I think it's the fun. I think, yeah, I think you should be keep going with the fun. I think with everything you're doing, you should have fun with it. You know, like, is there going to be some work days that are mundane or <laughs> just a little bored? Yeah, but I think overall, if you're having fun, time flies by and you're enjoying it. And I think that just extends that that end goal of 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 the finish line. So for me, when we talked about masters and everything and learning more. Everyone says like, oh, that's going to be a long time. I was like, man, I'm, I'm willing to take it all the time. That's the, the finish line. It's not a race anymore. And I'm just cruising down. I'm enjoying all of it. I love that so much. Aman, congratulations on wrapping up undergrad. Uh, best wishes to you going into your master's and, and beyond whatever that holds for you. And congrats on, on being, like I said, one of our inaugural scholarship winners. Uh, we're proud of you. And we thank you for coming on and sharing a little bit of your story with me today. So Thank you so much and best wishes, all right? Of course, thank you so much. Thank you for having me. Thank you so much for listening to this episode of The Fabric Podcast. If you want to see a video version of the show, jump over to thereceptionist.com slash fabric where you can watch video episodes of all of the content that we've put out on this podcast. You can see our bright, smiling faces and you can see what our studio looks like as well. If you would like to give the receptionist for iPad visitor management system a try in your office, jump over to thereceptionist.com slash free trial and sign up for a free trial. No credit card required and give us a try. See what you think. Until next time, take care.